If you're looking for mortgage relief, you may have heard that forbearance is not forgiveness, and you might have heard people warning you about the dangers of a mortgage forbearance in this time of national emergency. So what do you do if you can't accept a forbearance? My name is Michael Waslick. I'm a Florida foreclosure defense lawyer here in Florida with Ricardo and Waslick, and together with my partner, Jason Ricardo, we help people just like you overcome foreclosure and debt collection with dignity. And today I'm gonna to help you avoid a foreclosure by telling you exactly how a forbearance can lead you into permanent relief despite what some of the doomsayers are telling you. Now, the, the first point that most people who are warning about forbearance is making is that forbearance is not forgiveness. Now that is correct. A forbearance is simply a pause in your obligation to make your monthly mortgage payment and so if you are able to get a forbearance, uh, and I've shot other videos to tell you how to go about doing that, so follow, um, so follow the channel, check out some of the other videos, you'll see exactly how to get a forbearance if you need mortgage relief. But once you get one, what's the next step? Because a forbearance is simply a pause. If you get a forbearance agreement from your lender, they're simply telling you, you don't have to make your April, May, June, or whatever mortgage payments. And what that means is that those won't count against you as late, they won't affect your credit, and you will not be uh, subject to a foreclosure for missing those payments because you have gotten permission to do so as a result of the national emergency. But here's the kicker, at the end of a forbearance, at the end of a forbearance, the entire bill comes due. So if you get a three month forbearance, then you have to pay three months on top of your regular payment. If it's a six month forbearance or a 12 month forbearance, both of which are available under certain programs, then you would have to pay your six or 12 month past due amounts on top of that first regular monthly mortgage payment. Now clearly that's impossible. No one believes that most people would be able to do that. No one is suggesting that you should even think about doing that because that is for most people simply not doable. You wouldn't be asking for a mortgage forbearance if you were able to make those payments anyway. So what then are your options? Now, I've been talking about what I call the one-two punch, which is first you get a forbearance to put a pause on your mortgage payments while your income is affected. So if you've lost a job, let's say you work at a restaurant and uh, your restaurant is closed for three months and you don't have salary coming in, you don't have any uh, income coming in, and then once it reopens, then you'll be able to make your regular monthly mortgage payment. A forbearance accomplishes that then the only thing you need to figure out how to deal with is that past due balance. Typically, most servicers are gonna offer you a couple different options. One is a lump sum, pay everything up at once. Um, there are some ways to do that if you can take out a home equity line of credit and so on and so forth. Most people, that's not the right answer. The second plan that most loan, uh, that most mortgage lenders are gonna offer you is you can uh, enter a repayment plan for that past due amount. So if you missed three months, they would spread that three months out over the next 12 months, and then you'd be making a higher than normal mortgage payment. So you'd be making, um, you know, basically you, you take three months, you divide it by 12, so uh, you get, what, 25%. You'd tack an extra 25% onto your regular monthly mortgage payment. Um, I don't do math on camera. If my math is wrong, forgive me. But the idea is you take that monthly payment uh, the, the past due amounts, you spread it out over the next six, 12 months, whatever the repayment plan is, and then your regular monthly mortgage payment is higher for a short period of time than it was before until you make up that past due amount. Again, most people don't really like the idea of having a higher monthly mortgage payment immediately coming out of a crisis situation. You've probably got other bills that you need to tend to as well, and so if your mortgage payment goes up, that's probably the wrong idea. So the third option, the one that most people are going to want to look for is what's called a modification. A loan modification is where you and your existing lender agree to change the terms of your loan in one of four ways. One is they change the principal balance, two, they change the, the annual interest rate, three, uh, they will change the duration of your loan, and four, they'll change the monthly mortgage payment as a result of the changes to one, two, and three. They don't need to change all four of those in order to get you a viable modification. Um, they may change just one, resulting in a uh, monthly mortgage payment that might even stay the same, might go down depending on a whole bunch of different factors. The wrap against modification, there's 
there's three different myths that I've heard about modification that are uh, uh, that are the reasons that that uh, some doomsayers are warning you against modifying your loan, against get, doing the forbearance and the modification route. And it's something I personally don't believe is actually true what these people are saying. So the three things that they're saying is that in order to get a modification coming out of this national emergency, you must be late. That's wrong. Number two, they're saying that these, that the modification has to be reported negatively to your credit. Again, that is wrong. And number three, they're saying that approval is not guaranteed. Now that is partially wrong. Uh, it's, it's true that there's no guarantee, but the question is, are you likely to get a modification if you've done all the right things leading up to that step? And the answer is almost certainly yes. If your mortgage servicer, if your mortgage lender is offering. So if you have a Fannie Mae loan, you're gonna be eligible for certain Fannie Mae required programs. Freddie Mac has similar programs, and both of these entities have issued guidance letters to the mortgage lenders that service Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loans. I'm gonna share my screen with you in just a second, and I'm gonna show you an example of what that guidance says. So first of all, um, I'm gonna pull up the most recent uh, emergency guidance that Fannie Mae has issued to its lenders, Lender Letter 2020-02, and this talks expressly about COVID-19 servicing. And if you look at it, it talks about the forbearance plan. And then here on page four of that letter, uh, it says here, after a, uh, after a forbearance plan, they are requiring that mortgage lenders evaluate borrowers for deferral or mortgage loan modification. And they talk about the criteria here for doing it. So what's the reason for the delinquency? Is it temporary or permanent nature? In other words, if you lost your income because your workplace closed down during the shutdown, but now you're back at work and you have a, uh, have a, a resumption of income, you should, that should weigh in your favor. Uh, determining whether or not the borrower has the ability to repay the mortgage loan debt. So obviously you don't have a lump sum available, but you might be able to pay a regular monthly mortgage payment going forward. Then uh, they're supposed to educate the borrower and get a commitment from the borrower to resolve the delinquency. In other words, they want you to promise that, we, that you want to catch up, which almost all of you watching this video are going to want to do. So then what happens after they go through that evaluation process, then they revert to um, a Fannie Mae Extend Mod for Disaster Relief, which they call the Extend Mod. And that was introduced back in 2017, uh, and that has been updated to reflect the current situation. This, this lender letter that I'm looking at now was issued, in, uh, was issued in 2020. It was updated April 8th, and it expressly says that if you have a forbearance as a result of COVID-19, you can and must be considered for this extend mod, which is available for situations of disaster. And so if you, go to, um, if you go to that lender letter, which I'm going to pull up in just a second, uh, which describes that modification, you will see that there is a program already in place since 2017 that covers specifically uh, loan modifications to be offered after forbearance as a result of a national disaster, uh, which COVID-19 is qualifying for. Um, so here we go. This is the section that talks about reviewing for a workout option after disaster-related forbearance. A workout option simply means how are you going to account for those forbearance payments that haven't been made? And what they do uh, is that uh, they do not, they do not require that you are late. They do not require that it's reported your credit. In fact, federal law prevents any mortgage servicer from reporting your credit uh, from reporting your loan as late to your credit if you have entered a forbearance and if you enter a modification to accommodate for that forbearance, that's a COVID-19 accommodation and by law they are not allowed to report you as delinquent on your loan if you're taking advantage of these federal programs. So those warnings for people who are considering a forbearance that, oh, a modification is going to be a nuclear bomb in your credit. That's completely false. The, the warnings that you have to be late in order to qualify for COVID-19 relief, that's false. It's 
often true of other types of modifications, but if you've got a forbearance as a result of this national disaster, that is simply not true. It's a misunderstanding of the law. I think people are misinformed. I don't think anybody's trying to mislead anybody, but I think people just don't understand the problem or they're generalizing from their experience outside of this particular emergency because they haven't looked up the specific guidelines for this specific type of loan or this specific type of emergency. Um, again, Freddie, uh, Freddie Mac also has a guidance letter on this. It's the uh, Freddie Mac Bulletin 2020-10. And again, for Freddie Mac, which is similar to Fannie Mae for, for most practical purposes, uh, if you've got a forbearance and you are looking to uh, get a modification to pay off that past due amount, you're eligible for that. What does a modification do? Uh, it basically it changes the term of your loan. It takes the past due amount. It rolls it into your new loan. So it, it increases your principal balance, but it also then adjusts as possible your current annual percentage rate, your interest rate, which for most people will be lower than it was uh, going in unless you just got your loan or just refinanced your loan. Mortgage rates have dropped for most people, so you'll probably see a lower APR than you were getting previously. Um, finally, uh, they have the ability to extend your loan, so they could, for example, uh, modify your loan to say, all right, we're going to take that uh, mortgage payment, that three-month, six-month, 12-month forbearance, we're going to roll it onto the end of the mortgage period, extend your loan by another six months or year, and we'll just, you just make those payments later. They can do that. And then depending on what they do to alter your principal balance, what they do to alter your monthly uh, mortgage payment, what they, I'm sorry, what they do to alter your annual percentage rate, your interest rate, and then what they do to alter the terms, the, the duration of your loan, that may affect your monthly mortgage payment. Your monthly mortgage payment might even go down. So I recommend to most people, if you can't pay your mortgage right now and you need a forbearance, that's going to be required for you to qualify for this modification later. You actually must ask for a forbearance right now. And for the most part, if you're a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac borrower, uh, if your loan is, is Fannie, uh, Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae backed, you, they must offer you this forbearance. And so uh, you won't qualify for these modification uh, programs if you don't have that forbearance. So you must ask for a forbearance if you're in doubt about making your mortgage payments. You must ask for it. Again, I've shot another video to tell you how to do that. So check out the channel and see what those videos look like. But once you get that forbearance, you need to follow up immediately uh, at the end of the forbearance period. And, and by the way, you can extend the forbearance up to 12 months for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loans. But once your forbearance period is ended, you need to immediately ask for a modification so that you can avoid negative credit reporting, so that you can avoid being falling behind in your loan. and you will qualify for these loans. It is true that not every, um, every modification application is guaranteed. That is true. But if your income has recovered from where it was before the forbearance was entered, you're very, very likely to get these loans because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, their policy is to avoid defaults, avoid foreclosures. So they are going to extend this to you if your income is at or close to what it was before the forbearance. If your income hasn't recovered after six months or 12 months, you're probably in a much different situation anyway, and there's no mortgage relief program that would apply to you. Uh, you wouldn't qualify for a refinance. You wouldn't qualify for anything else anyway. If you are struggling as a result of this national emergency, the one-two punch of forbearance and modification is probably the best solution for most people, especially if you have a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan, so you want to do that. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, again, check out some of the other videos in the channel to, to find out, do I have a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan? Uh, how do I request this forbearance? What do I do after that? Um, how do I contact my individual mortgage servicer? I show you how to go about looking that up. Uh, all kinds of things. Lots of this you can do yourself if you have the time, the energy, and take the time to educate yourself on what's going on. Um, if you need help for that, that's certainly something that is available as well. If you have a question about anything I've said in this video, leave a comment in the video. Uh, I'll do my best to answer questions. Uh, if you have left a comment or you've left a question in the comments, um, watch the other videos in the channel for more complete information about uh, how to find out if you're uh, eligible for these programs, how to request it if you are, who to request it of, and, and the method to do it. 
um, and, and what happens if they don't give it to you. Um, those videos are all on the channel, so do look at that. Uh, if you need a more personalized uh, strategy session, our law firm is going to offer that for you. Um, you can call us at Ricardo and Wasik. The number is 352-567-3173. That's 352-567-3173. Call us and ask us for your free 30-minute strategy session. Um, mention this forbearance is not forgiveness video, and we will go ahead and provide that to you at no charge. We guarantee that you'll leave with more clarity, more certainty. There's no risk in our obligation to you. You don't have to hire us to do anything. You can just give us a call and we'll give you the best possible information that's available uh, to you right now. So thanks again for watching. Hope it was helpful and I will see you on the next one.